So let's do an example of the electric field from a line charge. So let's find the electric field some distance d above the midpoint of a line charge with length 2L and some charge per unit length lambda. Um, okay, so this is what the picture looks like. The first thing we should determine is that, well, since it's a line charge, uh, it's obviously going to be a single integral, which is useful for just keeping track of what we're going to have coming ahead of us. Uh, what coordinate system should we use? Well, naturally, a Cartesian coordinate system is the natural one. Um, and it should be a Cartesian coordinate system centered on the line charge. So x equal to 0 is at the center. The right side is at x equal to plus l. And the left side is at x equal to minus l. OK. So then we should consider what a small amount of charge is in terms of these coordinates. So a small amount of charge, dq, here, uh, it's going to be written as the charge per unit length times the length of that little bit of charge. And so here, that's going to be lambda times a little bit of length dx. And we're going to use prime, so we're going to use dx prime for coordinates along the line charge. Just an aside, the total charge, q tot, is the integral over dq, uh, which is the integral over lambda dx prime from negative l to l. Uh, and so that's lambda times 2l is the total charge of this uh, segment of line charge. Then the next important thing we need to do is figure out what curly R is, because that's the main ingredient in our calculations of the electric field. So we need to calculate curly R. Well, so um, how do we calculate curly R? Well, we need to recall the definition of what curly R is. So curly R is R vector minus R prime vector. If you remember, R vector is the vector from the origin to the point that we're interested in finding the electric field at. And so here, that's 0, 0, d. R prime is the vector to the small amount of charge, dq. And so the small amount of charge is at some x-coordinate called x prime, and it's 0, 0, as shown here. R prime is right there. OK, so that means that curly R is just R vector minus R prime vector. So it's minus x prime comma 0 comma d. Um, from this, we could figure out other quantities, namely the uh, absolute magnitude of curly R squared, which sometimes we'll just write as curly R squared, is x prime squared plus d squared. And curly R hat, which is the vector divided by its magnitude, is then obviously just the vector minus x prime comma 0 comma d divided by the square root of x prime squared plus d squared. OK, so now we can insert this into the general formula we have for the electric field for a line charge um, of Coulomb's law. And so we have 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, a single integral, dq over curly r hat over r squared. That was our general form. This becomes 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, lambda dx prime for x prime squared plus d squared, and then the curly r hat term. So notice that this curly r hat is a vector. And that's kind of strange if you think about it. Um, what does it really mean to be doing an integral of a vector? Normally, we're just doing integrals of functions. Well, what we mean by an integral of a vector is this is just three uh, separate integrals, because there's three components to the vector. So we're going to rewrite these uh, three components of the electric field vector as three separate integrals in components. So we have 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught the integral lambda dx prime, x prime squared over d squared. And then we grab the x component of the vector above, so minus x prime over that square root. So we're just grabbing this x component. And that's what we mean by the x component of the electric field. Similarly, we can do the same for the y, but of course the y component is just 0. The z component, we do a similar thing. It's still an integral over dx prime x prime squared plus d squared. And then we grab the z component, which gives you a factor of d over x prime squared over d squared, square rooted. So note that the integral uh, for the z component is over x direction, as well as the uh, electric field for the x direction. They're all integrals over the x direction. So now to find the electric field, we need to do these two separate integrals um, themselves. So before we do that, we should probably consider what are the limits on the integrals. 
we already talked about this when we did the total charge, um, but certainly the limits of integration are just telling you where the charge actually is. Um, that's what this is uh, essentially telling you. So since the charge is between x equal to plus L and x equal to negative L, um, that's what our limits are going to be on our integral as well. So altogether then, we have three components for the electric field that we should write down and we need to calculate. You know, minus one over four pi epsilon naught, the integral from minus L to L, lambda x prime over x prime squared plus d squared to the three halves, we combine those terms, integral over dx prime. And then similar for the z component, except there you have lambda d over x prime squared plus d squared to the three halves, integral again over dx prime. Note that. The x direction you can immediately say is zero by symmetry um, because the opposite sides of the uh, charge, the line charge, will have to cancel each other out. You can of course check this explicitly by doing the integral, but you'll find zero if you do that integral correctly. So now we need to do the z integral. And if you notice, you can pull out lambda d from the integral. Those are just constants. And so our integral is really just the integral dx prime over x prime squared plus d squared all to the three halves. Okay, so that's a not too fun integral, but you can look this up. You can use Wolfram Alpha or you can use Mathematica or you can look it up in a table of integrals um, to get this integral. And what you'll find is that this particular integral just by itself is equal to this fun combination x prime over d squared is the square root of d squared plus x prime squared. And then, of course, you need to evaluate between the two limits, plus l and minus l. When you evaluate the, between the two limits, you end up getting a factor of 2 times l up top. And then on the bottom, you have d squared times the square root of d squared plus l squared. So inserting this back into our form from the electric field, we then have that the electric field in the z direction, well, there was this stuff out front, and then there's the result of the integral here, can cancel a factor of d. I'm going to keep the factor of 2 up top, so write 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, and you have 2 lambda l over d to the square root of d squared plus l squared. So this is our result. Of course, in the x and the y directions, we also said those are 0, um, often or for the x direction by symmetry. Now, it's not enough just to have the answer, it's also useful to check to make sure you have the right answer. And so let's check units. So for the electric field, the correct units should be something like 1 over epsilon naught, whatever the units of that are, charge over length squared. That's what we expect for, in general, electric field units. Because electric field is something like charge over length squared. So uh, recall that units of lambda are charged per length, and so the units of lambda times L it's just charge. Uh, that's useful because that's the numerator of our electric field. And so then the units of the electric field result that we have, so 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, um, and then the rest of this material. Well, OK, so the 4 pi we don't care about. There's an epsilon naught that has units. The top has units of charge. The bottom has units of length times the square root of length squared, which indeed gives us, in fact, units of charge over epsilon naught length squared. So that matches the units that we expected we should have. So that's, of course, really good. Um, it's also useful to check the limiting cases of our, of our solution. Namely, what happens if d, the distance from the line charge, is much, much greater than the size of the line charge? So you're going really far away. Well, in that case, the electric field becomes 2 lambda l over d squared. And notice that the combination 2 times lambda times L was what we meant by Q tote. So this is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q tote over D squared. That just looks like the electric field from a point charge, which is actually what you'd expect. If you're really far away from a line charge, it essentially just looks like a point. And so the electric field also looks like a point. Um, if you are really close up, so the distance D is much, much less than the length L, then you get the electric field is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, 2 lambda L over D times L, uh, or the L's cancel, and so you get 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, 2 lambda over D. 
this actually makes sense as well. Um, in particular, the result is n dependent of L. So what it means is this looks like the electric field for an infinite line charge. In fact, if you remember what the electric field for the infinite line charge should be, th this is exactly what you would get. Um, so, so that actually makes sense as well. It's useful to check those limits. So let's talk about the general strategy that we use that will be useful in other cases as well. How do we apply Coulomb's law to find the electric field for a charge distribution? Well, the general form of Coulomb's law for a charge distribution um, was this, the integral over dq curly r squared over times r hat. Um, what we need to do, the first thing we need to do is really just set up this integral. So we need to determine, is it going to be a single, a double, or a triple integral? That will help us figure out what we're dealing with. should also set up a coordinate system that's appropriate for the problem. Uh, usually you want to use some kind of symmetry to set up the coordinate system. Once you've done that, you should identify what the little bit of charge dq is in terms of these coordinate systems. Um, and then comes the uh, calculation part, namely you need to calculate what curly r vector is and all of its derivatives, the magnitude and curly r hat. Once you have all that, you can insert dq and curly r into this general form for the integral above. Um, and then uh, you also have to choose the limits of your integral. And once you've done that, you pretty much set up the whole integral. Now you can do the integral. Um, notice that much of the problem with this, uh, with setting up these types of problems, is setting up the integral. Once you have to do the integral, you could use symmetry to maybe uh, make a shortcut, but usually you're just going to have some nasty integral that you have to do. You might need to look it up or something. Finally, you can check your answer by looking at the units, um, and also checking limiting cases, going far away and going up close. And those will give you some intuition for what the answer should look like. So this general strategy is useful for solving a wide variety of uh, Coulomb's Law problems for finding electric field, and we'll apply it in lots of different problems uh, throughout the semester.